We have quite the show for you this morning. But first, a story about the beauty of life and the tragedy of loss. At the center is a husband, father, and grandfather who was by his son Beau's side throughout his two-year battle with brain cancer, and all while upholding the duties of his office, that of the 47th Vice President of the United States of America. Joe Biden's political career spans nearly half a century, but it is the personal that grabs you in his new book, Promise Me, Dad, about the pain of navigating Beau's final year and how he and his loved ones have found a path to healing. The best vice president America's ever had, Mr. Joe Biden. Vice President Joe Biden has dedicated more than half his lifetime to being a public servant. Decades tackling domestic and international challenges have earned him respect and given him purpose. And I think no statement could state our constitutional duty more clearly. He was born in Pennsylvania into a modest household, but it was the people of Delaware who entrusted him with their votes, electing him to the U.S. Senate in 1972. But the happiness behind the young senator-elect's victory was short-lived. Mr. Biden received a devastating call in the middle of a meeting. His first wife, Nelia, and infant daughter, Naomi, were killed in a car accident that also left his two sons, Beau and Hunter, seriously injured. It was in the hospital at his son's bedside that he took the oath of office. Congratulations, Senator. Thank you. Suddenly, this newly elected public official became a single parent overnight. He would famously commute on the train between Wilmington and Washington so that he could strike a balance between work and being with his sons each night. As fate would have it, Joe Biden found love again. In 1977, he married Jill Jacobs, a school teacher. And then the blended family grew when daughter Ashley was born in 1981. Joe Biden built his legacy over 36 years in the U.S. Senate. Then, in 2008, I accept your nomination to run and serve with Barack Obama, the next president of the United States of America. Mr. Biden served two terms as our 47th vice president, beside the man who would become one of his closest friends, President Barack Obama. But in May of 2015, Mr. Biden suffered a loss for the second time, one no parent should ever have to live through, even one time. Beau Biden, the oldest son of the vice president, who had grown up to become an Iraq war veteran, the former attorney general for Delaware, and a familiar face from the campaign trail, died after a two-year battle with brain cancer, forcing the vice president to put to rest months of speculation. Beau is our inspiration. Unfortunately, I believe we're out of time, the time necessary to mount a winning campaign for the nomination. But while I will not be a candidate, I will not be silent. Today, however, there are growing questions about whether Joe Biden will toss his hat into the ring for 2020. For now, he's focused on sharing his family's heart-wrenching personal story of both hope and hardship in a new memoir, Promise Me, Dad. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome former Vice President Joe Biden and his wife, about that. Wow. <laughs> you feel that love? Yes. It's very nice. Thank you. Thank you both so much for coming. You know, I was watching that setup piece thinking, it's just now I put it together that you were, you were at your son's hospital bedside when you were sworn in to serve in the U.S. Senate, and you were at your son's hospital bedside when you were trying to decide whether you would run for president uh, this last go-round. What, what a life and what a career it's been for you. Before we get to that decision, Sarah, I'd love to start with the beginnings of the book, which is really a, a story of what, who your family is mm -hmm. and what they stand for, both of you. Um, you talk about Thanksgivings in Nantucket and the rituals you had there mm -hmm. from shopping uh, for Christmas and the Christmas lists that yeah. Jill, yeah. Oh, you always required yeah. the boys <laughs> and, and Ashley to make. Yep. It's true. Um, and you write about how somewhere along the way, as your boys grew up, 
you, you began to look up to them. Can, can you describe Bo to us? Well, I can describe Bo and Hunter. Uh, they're both, uh, they're a year and a day apart, my boys, our boys, and um, they uh, were each other's best friends. I was raised in a family where uh, every time, you know, when you're a little kid, you'd go up to your mom and say, Mom, I love you so much, you know, and she'd say, remember, you're closer to your brother and your sister than you are to me. Same blood, same blood. And, uh, and, and they, they were each other's best friends. And uh, they always, after the accident, uh, they, uh, they took care of me as much as I took care of them. I get credit for making over 8,000 round trips, 259 miles a day to go see them, but I needed them. And uh, as Jill will tell you, and Jill's mom, and there's, there's no step anything in our family. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, uh, if Hunt were here and stand outside, he'd come up and say, Dad, can I get you something? Can I get you, you know? They're always taking care of me and always saying, now, Dad, this is going to be okay. This is going to move. And, and it was somewhere, I guess, when they were about 14 and 15, I realized that I, put another way, my dad had an expression. He said, you know your success as a father when you turn and look at your child and realize they turned out better than you. No, but for real, both my boys, and my, they're better than me. And, uh, and I realized they had, they had such courage and, and the sense of duty. Uh, at, um, I, I literally, you know, I, it was kind of a, a hell of a thing to say, but it's kind of an awe of my boys. Yep. Um, the book takes us through Bo's illness and the devastating diagnosis in the summer of 2013 uh, of a glioblastoma which is a it was stage four brain cancer, mm -hmm. basically. It's what John McCain has. That's right. Um, and you talk about walking into his hospital room. The two of you were by his, his bedside throughout, trying to psych yourself up. This is from the book. Smile, I'd say to myself, smile, smile, smile. How many times Bo had said to me, don't look sad, Dad. I don't want anybody feeling sorry for me. How big a challenge do you think that was, Jill, for him? to stay positive, to keep a smile on his face, all while managing the responsibilities mm -hmm. of the vice presidency. Well, um, the one thing I think most people realize about Joe, I think probably people in the audience, people in the country, is the, he always maintains a sense of optimism. And you know, throughout Bo's illness, I mean, even though the diagnosis was, was truly devastating, we always had hope. We never gave up hope. We tried treatment after treatment. I mean month after month, but um, we always felt until the, the moment he closed his eyes, we always felt he was going to live because they told us, you know, we're going to try everything and things are going to get really bad, but he could make it. He could make it. And um, I think 1% of people who have uh, this brain cancer make it. And we thought, why can't Bo be that one? Mm -hmm. Why can he be 1%? And so, so, so we nice. always had hope. We always had hope. You, you talk us through in the book about an extraordinary conversation you had with President Obama when money was running tight. People think, you know, he's vice president of the United States. He must have money. He's been in public service his whole life. So he does not have money. I was uh, listed as the poorest man in Congress for 36 years. Congratulations. I hate when he says that. Number one. But it's true. But you, at one point, things got so tight because the hospital bills were mounting. Yeah. And, and Bo was in public service as well. You sat down with President Obama and said you might have to take out a second mortgage on your house in Wilmington. Tell, well, the, tell well, the audience what well, happened. Well, what it was, it, it wasn't that. It was that uh, Bo uh, had this enormous sense of duty. He worked every single day. He'd go in the morning at 6 o'clock. He'd go for three hours of either speech therapy or physical therapy in Philadelphia. He'd have the state troopers, he was attorney general, drive him back to his office. And he was always worried that people would think that if he didn't have the cog, he was beginning to lose the ability to, to recall proper names. And, but it had nothing to do with his cognitive capability. But he was so proud, he did not want to be in a position where he was accepting a salary if people thought he couldn't do the job. And so we thought that he might very well, before his time was up as attorney general, step down and he had no other income. And I was telling Barack that uh, th th that was the case. And I said, but it's no problem. And our son, Hunter, who does very well, could take care of it. And I said, and besides, I could, uh, I could take out a second mortgage. It's not a problem. And he got up from the table. He was emotional. He got up and he walked over. He said, Joe, don't, don't you 
you, you love that house, don't do that. I'll give you the money. I'll give you the money. That's who and, the Obamas uh, were. And that's, that's, that's who he yeah. is. That's the, that's, and we never needed to do that. And my son Hunter had the ability to take care of it. I don't know why I even got into the conversation except to try to explain to the president uh, that Bo was uh, struggling. And he's the only one I told anything to. I mean, other than mm -hmm. family. Yeah. He's the only one because I felt obliged to let him know exactly what was going on because of my responsibilities and duties. So he's a generous guy. He's a genuine friend. And Michelle is an incredible lady. There's an incredible much lady. more to the story, as you know, <laughs> including I'm going to ask the former vice president about the rosary on his wrist, those rosary beads. When we come back, more with former vice president Joe Biden and Jill Biden, and we'll learn the promise that Joe made to his son. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.